I mean, I'm looking at the schedule here right now, and it says Amin, Stugatz, Chris, Jess, Jeremy, Tony, Roy. There is no Dan. Mm. And huh. I'm sitting in the studio right now, and what I see, again, I'm going to read it again. Amin, Stugatz, Chris, Jess, Jeremy, Tony, Roy. I'm here. Who else is here? I'm here. Hi. You got to sigh, Bobby. Present. Hmm. Hello. I don't hear something phlegmy or, or something that smells like cigarettes. Mm. And I gave like vacation. Watch this. Keep an eye on this. I gave vacation time months ago so he wouldn't take the days that I took. And what he does is every time I leave, he vanishes because no one else can control him. I can't either. I can't either. But no, every time, months in advance, I gave my schedule. And I don't know where the fuck Stugatz is. to the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl champions possibly leaving Kansas City, a story that delights me. I wish there were more free agency and freedom among teams to Ooh. just bring Patrick Mahomes to your city unless the taxpayers cough up some money. This should be like the Globetrotters. This should just go from city to city. We got, we're playing tonight here. It's such a great bargaining chip. Would you like the next 10 years of Patrick Mahomes, City X? Would you build us a stadium? But we'll get to that in a second, implausible though it may be, because we've got giant news. I wasn't supposed to be in today, mm. but I came in today, and not because I knew Stugatz wasn't going to be here. I came in today just because of what happened during the Heat game last night. And I'm not talking about the Heat losing a crushing game and me not quite believing in this Heat team just because of what it did last year. I don't believe that that's recreatable from year to year. I don't believe Jimmy's just going to summon something in the playoffs. But we'll get to that in a second as well. The thing that I saw last night that made me come in, Jeremy Taché, Emmy Award-winning Heat prodigy, was caught last night in a <laughs> moment uh, that I'd like to put up on the screen. I don't know who caught this photograph. I don't know where this was put. I'm hoping it was put on the broadcast. Jimmy Butler is shooting a shot. And behind him, what you will see... Where's Waldo? What you will see behind him, and I swear, my God, if this had happened to me, Jeremy, if the, what the internet would do to me if I was behind Jimmy Butler licking my fingers because of something I had just eaten with, with half of my finger in my mouth because I'm clearly eating something in a way that is wildly unprofessional, is, is a bit disgusting, your fingers look extra fat. Yep. In, in, Whoa! In, yeah. I, mean, I was got, fine with all of it no, until you, you called back. my fingers fat. Jeremy, Jeremy you, you, you sit have to back. Take this, Jeremy, you. you're going to have to sit this out. Pretend there's a lot in your mouth, okay? Hey, and, hey yo! And, wow! And be quiet for a while because this picture and good lord, Jessica enjoyed uh, the horror of of this. Uh, explain to me, Jessica, what washed over you when you saw in a moment of really profound internet disgrace. Uh, Jeremy eating. 
<laughs> okay, well, let's start from the beginning. So the Heat posted this after their brutal, brutal, <laughs> brutal. brutal home loss brutal. to the Sixers. I mean, the playoffs started, right? I yeah, mean, and this started. was a playoff L. And they posted this with like a one of like the sad emoji, but the one with like the extra big pouty face. And so I retweeted it, and I was like, oh man, that's a that's a fun emoji for the Heat. Oh, Twitter but you hadn't seen at that point. You hadn't and seen this. And then someone replied and was like, is that Jeremy? Oh. And I lost my mind. I'm like adding oh, insult yeah. to injury. Jeremy's probably devastated about the Heat playing the worst fourth quarter of the season against the Sixers with Embiid back, losing by four points at home in the playoffs. And the Knicks won last night. I mean, it couldn't have been a worse night for Heat fans. And then this happens. I would like everyone to sit out this question who knows uh, the actual answer because it was talked about. I don't know the answer. I want people to guess what he was eating based on what it is that you're seeing in a photograph there that would require him. Let me let me see it again here. It's a single finger that he has in his mouth, right? It's the index oh, finger. But hey, can I dissect this a little bit? This is my this is my specialty right here. Yes. If you're doing one finger, you have a fist closed. This man was he we just caught him at that finger. He was cleaning all those bad boys. Yeah. I know that I know that five finger sprawled out. Yeah. That is a mid he is he's just going through the fingers right there. And we caught right. him on the pointer. He's got he's he's got them all ready lined up like an assembly line. Every time he kind of flips it and sucks off another one. It's Jer- gotta be popcorn. Jeremy, we will get to you in a second because I have an assortment of questions for you. Now I, I should to just so I don't know what the answer is, but I will soften it up by saying yesterday the media room dining was burgers and hot dogs and mac and cheese. No, this is late in the game. I haven't eaten since 2 p.m. I'm about to die if I don't mm. eat something. I know exa- I know this. It's late not, in no. the game. This yeah, is not no, a full meal. This no, is a snack no. of some sort. Here's what you've got wrong, and this I've got some area, some expertise in. That's comfort eating because of that fourth quarter. Mm. Like, th- what is happening there is not that he hasn't eaten since two Ice p.m. Cream. It's that the Heat have devoured his insides, and they're playing poorly. And, oh, shit, the Sixers are healthy again. And that's what they look like when he's got to go on back. TV after. Here's my question, though. Was he doing, like, the thing where you're licking something off your fingers or mm-hmm. when there's an extra cheesy buildup, perhaps, from, like, a oh. Cheeto pup and you got to use you the like teeth? Your or is he cleaning you got to use the finger. teeth to kind of scrape it off. No. Are you cleaning the finger here? That's not a scrape. Look at those lips. That's not a scrape. It could be the end of a scrape, though. It could be the that we he is could... cleaning the shit out of that finger. Oh, right look there. at those lips. He's like two knuckles deep. We he he is. He uh, has a whistle. He is one knuckle deep, but you can just see a funny phrase. He's approaching. No, but he's approaching the second knuckle. Yeah. Like it halfway is a, there, and he can object to the fingers being fat. He can object to that. But the camera this, adds five. Pounds. This is an unflattering oh. photo. How many telephoto uh, lens, Dan? How many cameras did he eat? Oh wow. Jeremy, what was it? No, 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 no. no. First yeah, of all, no. was it a scrape? Any, I'm saying popcorn. Any other guesses? Hold on. I, I, Jeremy, first answer the question of, is that the fourth finger to have ended up in the mouth? And we caught that. That action photograph was late. Yes or no? And do not answer dishonestly. Just yes or no? Probably yes. <laughs> okay. Did you get all five of the finger, the, all four of the fingers and the thumb? Yes I, or no? Uh, yes I, or no? It's generally no. a four-finger no. cleaning because you rarely touch the with thumb. the pinky. The pinky. The answer the is no. Usually you no. grab stuff with here, no. and it's it's rare you're Two involving fingers. the pinky. Was it a scrape? It was a scrape. Wow. Ooh, a pinky that gives off chip. I know a scrape if, when I see uh, one. If it's only two fingers, that gives off a chip hole. If it's a scrape, I'm going back to the mac and cheese. If it's that. every finger, it's popcorn. You know how we know we go in there with all fingers. Whereas a chip, I can go two fingers. You gotta lick the whole hand if it's yeah, popcorn. Yeah, yeah. Just. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have any other guesses other than popcorn? I already know what it was. <laughs> Barbecue chips. Barbecue? You have Barbecue. the flavor. Okay. Yeah. Tony, yeah, what are you flavor. laughing about? <laughs> the shot of me licking my hand. <laughs> it was nasty. <laughs> no, it's very disgusting. I'm, I, my, my palms are sweaty from how disgusting this is because I hate putting my fingers in my mouth, especially like that was sc- this. scraping whatever is on yeah. my fingers into and my it teeth. It is disgusting to do that at a basketball arena. Really, really disgusting when and you're shaking you have to hands, touch a mic? babies. All right, I want to come. I wanna hold come on, to- hold on. I, was, okay. I wasn't yeah. done. Oh, okay. Cartoonishly, what I have Jeremy doing. Uh-oh. <laughs> 
is having a single hot dog just like <laughs> like a cartoon. Oh, no! <laughs> you just caught him at the end where he just finished putting it in his mouth. Eating it so fast that the ketchup comes off it, and he's just like, making sure that the ketchup stays in exactly, at the end. Because exactly. It's, <laughs> it's just like one shot of a hot dog down his gully. Like, that's, and that's the end right there. He like, just, he just like if we had in. an x-ray, we'd see the rest if, of the hot if, dog. If the finger wasn't there, what would leak out is a couple of drops of ketchup that he hadn't just kept in. With or the back end of the dog. He's like... <laughs> He was yes, pl- plugging, plugging a hole. All right, Jeremy, I now have a number of different questions for you, and I ask you for the first time in your life to be efficient with the answer. Yes or no's? Just get, yes. Uh, it, it will be some yes or no questions, but first I want to ask, uh, when in the game was this? Probably either late third or early fourth quarter. Is this Snack not, time. is this a habit of yours when it comes to eating? Is this regularly when you eat, or have you been caught in a particularly inopportune moment? That is normally when I will eat some food. Yes. Do you often eat You're and then right stick your fingers? It's a deposition. That is correct. Do you do you often stick your fingers? I want to see how what the odds are of you being caught in this compromising a position. So how often and what food? would you normally be eating when you would do something like this? I changed my routine last night. Normally, I would be eating pretzels. I was not eating pretzels. Mm, there pretzels. we go. So we can strike pretzels off the list. Is this a sauce or a powder that is I'm being... I'm not going to be deposed. It's a powder. Uh, so are you thinking oh. Cheetos? Like something Cheetos related? It's do a they powder. have those at the po- Casaya like Center? Popcorn? Is popcorn's not going to have a powder well, on No, it. they do have the little seasoning thing at the heat arena. They've got like a, a seasoning little I'm telling you guys, don't sleep on the sprawled fingers here. White cheddar popcorn I leaves you with a bit of that residue yep. in your hand. This reads popcorn. I'm telling you, the fingers spread out. He's going but through But he the... said it's a scrape. And he said it's only a couple of fingers. I don't believe him. Uh, uh, I know that. I, I know that. I see that. That is a popcorn hand right there. That is a hold him. In contempt of that court? is a man working his way down the hand. I mean, look at that thing. Hold you don't on, just Chris. do this and put one finger in. Chris, hold on. Permission to treat the witness as hostile. Yes. Okay, now, Chris, go after him. Sustain. I, it's bullshit, dude. It's popcorn. Clearly popcorn. All five fingers. You're clearly there going down the line. You did the thumb right before this. That would have been a worse look, I think, the thumb. I, think <laughs> I, this- I have an, a number of questions, please, okay? I understand that you all want to get in on the fun here, but I, I don't want this to disappear just yet. The number of fingers, Jeremy, that were licked here were, give me a number. Two to three. Okay. Oh, he's already cracking. I'm right. telling you, this was all five. Did you, uh, did you, with that finger where it's being caught, did you also scrape around the edges of your gums? Uh, no, absolutely not. A gummy. Absolutely not. They, that's what they call a gummy. I want to defend places. Jeremy. Uh, all of us in our private moments, all of us, all of us in our private moments do what Jeremy does. No. Like, I don't know about that. I don't like licking no. my fingers, exactly. like food off my fingers. I bite I, my, my nails. Fingers have so this to be is so a, clean. Yeah, I, I already bite my nails, so this is like it, it, it's not that different. I have a couple of friends, believe it or not, who have said to me that they rarely get sick because they are so vigilant about never putting their guess hands who's here all the time. Guess who's never sick? Mouth. Uh, I mean, me. Uh, we've had a lot of sickness this week. Uh, you uh, were what degree of mortified by everything that happened here, Jeremy? Because this is an inopportune time for you to be caught as a professional. You don't have, you don't have a lot of public shame, I don't think. On your <laughs> probably none on your on your resume, where people where the internet can turn on you and call you disgusting. Right now, Tony is standing next to you, and he's palpably disgusted by this entire conversation. This is where the line is for Tony. I just said. I asked the question, were you scraping out your gums? And Tony is palpably disgusted by the idea of that. Tony's it, claiming he never puts his fingers in his mouth for a single that's reason ever. I don't. He's I, a bold-faced liar. To, to, to oh, take, hold on, hold on. You, you, you relax over there. Yeah, yeah, take it easy. No, because that's a lie. Oh, overruled. Thank you, Amin. <laughs> to, to, when I eat something, like I was at Flanny's the other day and uh-huh. I had ribs, right? Okay. I eat my ribs with a fork and that's a knife. That's worse than what Jeremy did. No, it's You're not. So so you eat ribs with a fork and knife. Yeah, that's worse I, than what Jeremy no, did. No, because I don't want to get... Penalty box. I don't want to get... Thank you. No, absolutely wow. not. Absolutely not. Because of my cleanliness? Sorry, no. I don't want to get barbecue sauce under my fingernails because then it smells for like three days. I don't want to do that. So when I'm eating chips, 
I'll eat the chips and then I like to have a wet wipe handy so that I can wipe the stuff off my fingers without putting it in my mouth. If you eat your ribs with a fork and knife, are you fun at parties? Yes or no? I'm, I'm great at parties. You uh, seem like you are, but the, the ribs thing really just... It's an easy thing to judge. I think most people, uh, I think Mike Greenberg eats uh, sandwiches exactly. and hamburgers with Point a made. fork and knife. I eat my hamburgers like, a, like you know, both hands. I imagine that uh, David Sampson probably has some of this as a bit of a germaphobe, uh, but uh, I... Uh, but agree- he doesn't like his fingers because he can't taste the flavoring coming yeah, out. Yeah, there's no point for him. I mean, Samson's super confusing to me. He still eats super fattening, tasty things, even though he can't taste anything. Like, I, the only thing that I have not thought that would be bad about losing taste and smell is that it would be easier to diet because you don't care whether you're eating a If I could lose my taste not. and smell, maybe my fingers wouldn't be so fat, Dan. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, though, there are a few things that I see on Twitter and I am on my couch and go, ha! <laughs> And that was one of those last night. I texted Jeremy just a laughing face emoji, and he knew exactly what I was talking about. It was after the game. No, no, Jeremy, this is not about the game now, at all. Now, Jeremy, I, I want to. I know I've been on the prosecution side, but let me get on the defense here. Wow, viral decontextualization is something that's afflicting this country. And if you're a victim, the law offices of Amino has and will fight for you. So just let me know, man. We got a whole team. I got my, my uh, associate, Charlotte Wilder, in New York City. She's hit the books. We've got all types of legal precedents and things to help people save their reputations. Get their reputations clean. Just call them in. I would love to. There's no decontextualization. Oh. I'm putting my fingers in my mouth. This is a Moses Brown situation. This where, is what it is. Like, no, <laughs> well, came amazing. viral decontextualization doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Viral mm. decontextualization means that it happened once, and now everyone's making you out to be this gross person who licks their fingers all the time. I was just eating W's. I was just trying to motivate the heat. But you caught an L. You caught an L. Yeah, they caught an L, but I was trying. Hey, look, man. They needed to go on a run. And what happened after this happened? They <laughs> went on a run. They took a lead. He did you say would have his routine. If you would have had the W up in this shot, that would have been Someone great. can Photoshop. I did, I did change my routine here. Um, so I don't the, know if you guys want the answer on fault? what I was eating, but... Uh, I did change my routine on what I would traditionally eat during this snack period of the game. What is this? What did you eat? It's gotta be popcorn. Salt and vinegar chips. Wow. That is a very tasty oh. snack. That's oh, a that's scraper. Close. And let me that teach you a move here. Lay it in the bag. Flop it open. Uh-huh. Like make sure the sides exactly no right. creases on the side. Get the bottom and exactly the bo- you want right. the bottom to oh, be flat okay. a flat V. Uh-huh. Right here, Jeremy. Oh, so so you think if I'm I'm doing what you yeah. just described in the background of a photo. Pouring not as bad as this, chips into my mouth. Not as bad you as you think that that's a better you thing have seen than your face. this. The bag would have been covering your face. Oh. You would have had anonymity to do whatever you wanted. Can't be worse, bro. Put it on the poll, please, Juju. Worst way to get caught eating: shoveling a bag of chips into your face <laughs> uh, from above. Shaking a bag of chips, swallowing it like a pelican in your face, or uh, licking individual fingers one at a time. Uh, uh, put however it is that you want to write. Emptying that. a bag of chips into your mouth or licking your fingers after. Uh, Jeremy, how did the shame of it go for you in general? Uh, what level of embarrassment uh, did you have? How many people were grilling you about this? How many Heat employees said that you had disgraced the organization? Yeah, so I um, obviously, eating. yeah, I'm e- eating some Cheetos now. Uh, I obviously was crushed nice. by the way that that game ended, not just because of the result, but it changes my job. I, I get to do a winner circle interview after the game if they win and when they lose that doesn't happen so I'm you know slumped shoulders walking back to the locker room waiting to go in and speak to the players go in the locker room's pretty somber I was like I've got a couple minutes before the rest of the media gets here let me go on my phone and so I check Twitter and all of a sudden I got more notifications than I anticipated I'm like what's going on here and I just see my face with my finger in my mouth just over and over and over and over again and I froze, mm-hmm. and then about 60 seconds later, a Heat PR guy walked up to me and was like, hey, man, I haven't smiled for the last 20 minutes or so. Thank you for what's going around on, on the Internet right now. That's how you turn it into a win, Jeremy. They go on a massive winning streak for the end of the season, and you can point to this. This made everybody happy in a moment of sadness. Viral decontextualization does not have to afflict you, Dan. 
You can fight back. Just call the law offices of Amino Hassan. Let's do this commercial correctly as opposed to the way that he just I did I don't it. have to do it correctly. I already did it correctly. There it is. Right there. Yeah, play it. That's what I was Every asking year, for. thousands of lowlights are taken out of context and disseminated across social media. It's called viral decontextualization, and it afflicts thousands of former NBA players and weekend warriors alike. Hi, I'm Amin al Hassan, and I was once a victim of viral decontextualization. Let me help you fight back. If you or a loved one have suffered a viral video of a basketball play that is not representative of your playing ability, contact the law offices of Amin al Hassan right now. If you've suffered from a viral video of a basketball play that is not representative of your playing ability, call the law offices of Amin al Hassan right now. He is 100% a real lawyer. Don't let viral decontextualization ruin your life. Call Amin and get your reputation clean. Watch this. Pass me the rock. Hey, ain't you that guy from the internet? Yeah, but I'm not who my video said I am. <laughs> no, 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 no. Please don't wait. Stop viral decontextualization. Call 1 800 Oddball or visit www.townhorrendous.com and have a mean fight for you. I mean, what are you making me read? It's real easy, Jeremy. Downhorrendous.com. Can we just talk about the game? We cannot. Uh, we the heat stink. We might do oh, that. That's not we true. talked about the game. We might do that later because I do want to file away the idea of who do you trust more to recreate one of these turn it on playoff runs, the Lakers, Golden State, or Miami? Because I think Miami fans are expecting Miami to do it again. And I think Miami, Miami is the one to do it most recently. The idea that you could just turn it on in the playoffs, but I would have less faith in them to do it. Than the Warriors or the Lakers, because I think yesterday or last year had some fluke in it. But on Oddball that Amin does with Charlotte Wilder, you guys were making fun of Thibodeau the other day uh, by song. Is that what you did? Yeah, so Tom Thibodeau, if you guys didn't see in the press conference after the loss of the Heat, uh, kind of in an answer about a question about Jalen Brunson's night, looked at the box score, saw that he had 10 free throw attempts, and said, which looks good except for the fact that he got fouled, and then he goes into this glitch. So... I believe Charlotte went into the lab and cooked something up with DJ Steve. Do you Porter. want to throw it to the video again, less awkwardly than you did before when I was trying to throw it to the video? It wasn't awkward on my on my behalf. DJ Wilder things. Tibbs on the track. He's getting fouled. He's getting fouled. He's getting fouled. He's getting fouled. When Jalen drives to the rim, defenders swarming on him. Getting fouled. Getting fouled. When Brunson goes attack, well, they got him in a chokehold. Getting fouled. Getting fouled. He's getting fouled. Don't mess with Tibbs. Oddball remix. That is Wilder Thing, uh, produced by DJ Steve Porter. Bars. I believe that our show does a better job of covering the three and the seven seed in the Eastern Conference than any other show in America. If they end up as the three and the six... We got that beat covered on the first round matchup. Oh, my God. I will talk for a second about last night's game because one of the very frustrating things about it, and I will say this, I think Mike Ryan has been loud wrong on Terry Rozier, that he has been here, a very good isolation player, necessary when Tyler Hero is gone, efficient in a way that I wasn't expecting. But that game last night, at the end, I do not want him doing all of that. I want Jimmy Butler doing all of that, and I will live with the consequences of Jimmy Butler doing all of that. And I know Jimmy Butler missed a shot late as well, but Terry Rozier running around out there all over the place did not make me comfortable against Embiid and, and Maxie who torched them. And those two guys are coming off of injury. And the other thing, I mean, because I, was watch- I wasn't watching the end of this game. I was listening to it on old-timey AM radio, wow. which was barely coming in at night. Like Jason I was- Jackson? I was listening to it, yes, Jason Jackson. And all they were saying over and over again is how tired the Sixers were because why would Embiid have his legs and yet still Terry Rozier mm-hmm. uh, did things at the end that uh, when 
that cost them in the playoffs, you're never going to stop hearing the end of it from Mike Ryan, who just really dislikes the inefficiencies of Terry Rozier. Well, first of all, I thought Terry Rozier played very well last night up until the end. Uh, At the end, what happened is what's happened a lot over the last couple of months for the Miami Heat, which is they're in a game, it's a closed game, and then at some point the other team says, oh, that's right, we have stars. And the Heat are like, oh, shit, we don't have any of those, though. And so what you see is Tyrese Maxey be amazing in a way that a star player can be amazing. In the same way that a few weeks ago when Denver came to town and it was a close game, and then the Nuggets said, wait a second, we got the MVP and we got uh, another guy who's probably the best second banana in the league. And then those guys did star-like things, and the Heat kind of fumbled and turned it over and missed shots and couldn't get any penetration. And it goes back to this thing about offensively, this team is compromised. They play smart, they play hard, but at some point in the NBA, you need a talent that can overtake and overcome and say to hell with the play call. I thought that was playoff Jimmy. That's supposed to be playoff Jimmy, but you know what? Also, there's another question here. We keep saying, oh, is Jimmy going to turn it on or whatever? What if he can't turn it on anymore? I'm not, I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm asking the question, what if this is it? He, he's not 30. He's not 31. He's an older player. I mean, that would be an issue for the Heat if he can't turn it on, right? That changes the entire landscape of how their roster is built. But that's why Terry Rozier was in the position he was in. The Heat only scored one field goal in the final eight minutes. Mm -hmm. It was a Terry Rozier three to cut it to two with about a minute left. And their offense sputtered, and it was in part because of Jimmy's lack of aggressiveness at the end of that game. That game was bipolar, Dan.
pee pee. Yeah, you know me. You gotta go pee pee. Yeah, you know me. You gotta go pee pee. Yeah, you know me. You gotta go pee pee. Let's David Sampson is joining us now, but before we get to him, I just want to put a couple of things on the poll, please. Uh, do you lick your fingers while eating salt and vinegar chips? Do you trust anybody who eats ribs with a fork and knife? Thank you. <laughs> and this is not a poll question, but Amin said, I think he called Jamal Murray the se- the best second banana in the league. Are you sure about that? Because uh, while I think Jamal Murray is excellent, I think he is made more excellent by playing with the MVP. And I'm not sure a lot of people would call him the best sec- the best second banana in the league. Second banana as in fulfills that second banana role. I was going to say, we can probably change the lingo on that maybe. First uh, banana? Uh, well, I'm not even sure what it means. Is, this, is, is, is the second banana much smaller always than the first banana in a in a group of bananas? Is that what the expression means? Anyways, answer that question for us, David. Not the banana question, but the other ones. Uh, the licking of fingers while eating salt and vinegar chips and eating uh, ribs with a fork and knife. So I do eat things with a fork and knife, and I do not lick my fingers. Ever. Uh, what it is w- disgusting. What would you call the thing that you would, the strangest thing, the thing that we would judge you the most for eating with a fork and knife? A hamburger, a hot dog? Stickers bar? Slice of pizza. A oh slice my God. of that's, pizza. That's, but if that's it's really offensive. hot, though, you that's can have offensive. that first slice with a fork and knife until it cools down. As a New Yorker, I'm offended. Uh, what makes I'm that- a New Yorker, too. I used to do the fold, fold, but then all of a sudden, one time, the fold led to the leaking of the grease. On the back, so, down the hand, down the wrist, no. and that was the final time I did it that way. You've, you've got it's all about the the wrist action. You've got to go angling forward with the plate out in front of you, like so. That way, the dripping will come onto the plate, not on your clothes or yourself. That looks like your shot wrist action. Okay, relax. The New York <laughs> Times has an article from 1958 that dates top banana back to 1927. The article describes a routine in which three comedians are trying to share two bananas with one person as the top banana and as one as the second banana. I'm confused, Tony, when you say pizza being too hot. If it's too hot for you to hold and you have to use a fork and a knife, isn't it going to be too hot to put in your mouth with the fork? Absolutely, but I need to get it in. Okay. (laughs) Have you you ever been sitting at a restaurant where you order the pizza? It's not like when you have pizza takeout because it's usually not as hot when you get it home, right? When you're sitting at your local Italian eatery and they put down the pizza in front of you straight out of the hot ass oven Mm -hmm. and it's a thousand degrees and you know the moment you bite it, it's going to burn the entire roof of your mouth off. I get that first slice. I cut it into little squares. I start eating it as an almost an appetizer, like Cazola's. Dan, I know you know Cazola's. <laughs> Stop that. Don't play me, okay? They would, cu- they would cut up the cheese pizza, and then you'd go and like get a little free sample. That first pizza for me is a little free sample, and then I start eating the pizza. This right is here. offensive. But like, if anyone else said this, Tony would be killing them. No, That's what I'm saying. I would agree with them because if, I do it. Uh, no, no, no. Tony, if I said <laughs> I, I eat I ribs know. with I'm a fork and a knife, man. yes. Oh, you're a dork. Right. <laughs> but I you. do it for cleanliness, though. So. Okay, but I do think that you can't be so eager about eating that you're going to put something that hot in your mouth, too hot to hold. Dan. You've never done it. How how is your guy's hot tolerance? Because I I bet I have the highest hot tolerance in terms of temperature, not spicy. I have seen you. I have seen you throw a hot pocket in your mouth out of the microwave dangerously and burn your tongue and sort of muffle screaming because your tolerance isn't quite what you're saying it is right now. Well, I I think you're speaking back to when I taught you the perfect way to eat a pizza roll where I bite the corners, pinch it, yeah. pot, a little pocket of steam. Like, I, don't, I think you're misremembering yes. that. No, I don't I remember. You. I think we, I crushed we, that. We had the conversation head. because you did it so poorly, and then you put on a seminar for Just some Just because I do the when it's in my mouth, and I go, <laughs> Chris, that's to let the steam out. Do you, do you bite opposite corners and then blow to have like a, a sort of circulation of it? No, no, no. Inside mine's it? mine's no. the same two corners, little no, pocket, no, no. turns into a little, little gotta, bag of chips. Cat a corner. Got to go cat a corner. I mean, mm. uh, please tell Samson to his face everything mm-hmm. you had to say yesterday about him uh, hosting Rich Eyes. And incidentally, you caused a great deal. Uh, behind the scenes, people were saying to me, hey, wasn't Samson the one who came on here and said to you, Dan, if someone ever wears a Pat McAfee shirt or a Rich Eisen mm-hmm. shirt that you would fire them, mm-hmm. that Dan mm-hmm. should fire them? And then here you are yesterday actively competing on against our show by filling in for Rich Eyes and tell tell David to his face what you said on the air yesterday. I only have one word to say. Traitor. 
Hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> mean traitor. Mm -hmm. No, it's called uh, building a career. It's called taking advantage of opportunities to improve myself and to learn situations. Maybe I'm going there to learn to bring back to your show, Dan, mm. things that we can do better. Don't need anything from there. You know, you know what I where I heard that, Dan? People went to go learn January 6th. Whoa. It's Whoa. Stop. Whoa. That He's claiming you're an insurrectionist. insurrection. I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's not even. Threat I, to I the mean. democracy of the Levitard yes. show. Yes. I mean. Yes. I learned a ton. Yes. <laughs> I am more than happy to engage in a conversation with you about what I did yesterday. I am not happy to discuss this under the blanket of January 6th. You threatened, tour. you threatened freedom yesterday. <laughs> the female's a Yankee. I like your idea, Jessica. Can you create a female Skip Bayless for Women us? Women can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you don't feel any remorse about, I felt a great deal of uh, hostility, some jealousy, uh, because you got to sit in on a show that is one of the biggest that there are in sports. It was, it was an interesting day. I was invited to do it again today, but I didn't do it. For example, if he taped it while I'm responsible to do things with you or for nothing personal, I clearly wouldn't have done it. The timing just seems to work if I'm willing to wake up at 3 a.m. in L.A., which I was, to do nothing personal at the regular time and to do everything I'm supposed to do for you. But I remind you, Dan, that when I asked to be an employee of Metal Arc, you declined. As an employee of Metal Arc, I would not be able to. As an independent contractor, I can do anything you I want. You always say I declined. I had nothing to do with your negotiations. Like, you keep I, putting I, I like this on me. like when you hide behind ignorance and lack of involvement. Yeah, but, I enjoy that. Yeah, but I mean, greatly. I had nothing to do with your negotiations. You own the company, Dan. It's called plausible deniability. But I, I, I was not, nobody I mean, asked me, David, should we make him an employee or not an employee? David's, no one asked David's me. David's right about this. <laughs> I will admit. It is my responsibility, but he's saying I knew, and I didn't know, and he knows I'm being honest. Like, I'm not lying about that. It becomes my responsibility, but I had nothing to do with how his contract was formulated. Dan, do you not recall the insurance conversation that you and I had? Because by not being an employee, I don't get insurance by Metalark. No, and I don't. And we talked about that. I and don't. therefore, my expense ah. to the company goes down because I'm not an actual employee. Are you saying that we did not have that conversation? I am saying that. I'm saying that you're making that up. I don't. Same. Oh, you, or yes, I don't remember it. I don't you remember see, it. You guys see the seeds of insurrection already now. Jessica and Jeremy are backing up. Samson, this is what happens, Dan, when you let them just run around here creating capital crimes. Who's them? The insurrectionists. <laughs> What's uh, today? The April Sixers. You'll be hearing from my attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I am your attorney. Uh, he's, he is one of them. Uh, he's one of our attorneys. Uh, let's get to some, some of the things that are going on here inside and outside of sports, because you mentioned getting up at 3 a.m., on the West Coast, and I don't totally understand what's happening with the business of the NFL Network. I don't understand having to let go of Melissa Stark and Andrew Siciliano. Uh, Good Morning Football is a wildly successful, popular show, and evidently it's very difficult to get people um, in New York uh, up at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning to do that show? Is that what the problem is? Like, why is this happening at the NFL Network? Do you have any idea? Does it have anything to do with the equity stake in ESPN or any of the other stuff? Because I'm not understanding why the NFL Network would have to cut costs. You just conflated a few things. Good Morning Football is moving from New York to L.A., and now the people have to wake up earlier because it's going to be on at the same time, East Coast time. They weren't waking up at 3 a.m. New York time. No, the call time is really early for the New York. So the question that you're asking is why, why people were let go yesterday, and media companies are doing that all over. NFL Network has to stand on its own, as does Metal Arc and ESPN and all the other different companies, and that's why you see layoffs when there are costs that are maybe too high, and so you cut them. And the easiest way to cut costs is with people, and that is the sad truth. That doesn't mean it's right. It just means it's it's life. The reason they moved Good Morning Football from New York to L.A. is they're trying to condense where the NFL media comes from. And you may recall that NFL media, they're trying to sell everything. They've been trying for years to sell off NFL Network and get a buyer, and they just haven't been able to. 
because these league started networks are just not worth what the leagues thought they would be worth when they first were started and what owners were promised the value would be. Well, to go back to David's earlier point, he's right. That's why we have more employees here that don't have health care than than hmm. do. Hmm. Okay, we stand with David. Okay, great. That's an important point to make when you're in the middle of an insurrection. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of need the health care. Uh, yeah, I think it's important to have health care. I agree with that. I lick my fingers, so I probably need some health care. That's why we can't yeah. insure you. Let's put on the screen here what is happening at the Mets because I'm stunned, David, as someone who has watched the Mets all my life, to see this, <laughs> the first week of the season, to see the ballpark this empty, and to see what has been what, David? I'm not going to defend Steve Cohn, but I just at least point out to people that's game one of the doubleheader of a rescheduled game. And so the people who have tickets to game two don't have tickets to that game. And so that's why it looks that yeah, way. Yeah, you're, you're saying that it looks sad, but they also had the third lowest opening day ticket price ahead of only the Marlins and the A's. And I can't believe I'm saying that about the Mets, the White Sox. The White Sox that are the only team in baseball that hasn't won 25 games since the last All-Star game uh, had a higher ticket opening day price than the Mets. Let's play this sound. Is this Ron Darling? Let's so play sad. this. Nobody in the ballpark. 0-5. Hitless through seven. Feels like rock bottom. That's Gary oh. Cohen. <laughs> uh, you're laughing at it. But this and is the Marlins are worse. He's had a tough week. Gary Cohn is the one who on the internet, I hope if you have the video for this, that would be an amazing video team where Gary Cohn is talking about the rain delay from the night before acting all good and happy. And then the camera goes off and he has this face like, I can't believe I'm here. My job stinks. This team stinks. And he got caught in a, in a hot camera situation. And it's been a thing. But you're talking about a Mets team with an over $300 million payroll. The problem is they're paying a bunch of players not to play for them, like a Verlander and who's not playing and a Scherzer who's not playing. So maybe it's not a terrible move by Steve Cohn. But you're also talking about a team that has really no chance to compete in the National League East. But really, when attendance is low, it means they have no season ticket holders. Because you can make up the attendance. It doesn't matter who's there if you have a high season ticket base. I just can't believe that this is the state that the Mets are in. This is, uh, for better or worse, one of the biggest franchises in the in, in the history of that sport. And I understand that they haven't done a lot of winning but and that they're a second-class team compared to the Yankees, but they are not the A's, the Marlins, and the White Sox, David. No, they're clearly not, especially with that payroll. And they've done a bunch of winning. Two years ago, they won over 100 games. So I, I think that that's not the issue. The issue is was time of game and a low season ticket base. Nothing personal is the name of his podcast. And for some reason, you could catch all of his insurrection work with Rich Eisen mm -hmm. uh, today at uh, noon Eastern. Uh, David, thank you, sir. I will. Will I see you in Atlanta on Monday for our live tour? You will not. OK, what thank is you. what is going on in Atlanta? Tell the people in, the, in Atlanta, do you have a lot of listenership in Atlanta? Is that why you put your live tour in Atlanta? Yeah. So Atlanta is a good market and there'll be some guests, including a former Marlin. Jeremy, if you want to come, Dan Ugla is going to come by. Dan Ugla. And, yes. <laughs> oh, my God. And, I'll be there. And what about Juju? Juju is going to be there as well. Even better. Jeremy, you so will not be there. So that's why I thought, Dan, you'd be You're right. There. I won't be there. Well, he lives there. No, Jeremy, why would you say you're going to be there? Well, I was just trying to get everybody get out. excited for David. What? Get out. Yeah. What? Get out. You know, people don't talk about get that. Get out! Chips are your dinner. You need get to have every crumb. Get out! Get out!
There are a number of things that I want to get to, but you guys uh, just delivered a bit of sports media news that might be interesting in certain small circles, which is the executive vice president who has been running ESPN for a long time, quietly called out by Pat McAfee, Norby Williamson. It is being reported by his personal uh, lackey in the media, Andrew Marchant of the New York Post, a bottom feeder who gets most of his information from Norby Williamson. What will he do now? At ESPN, that Norby Williamson is quitting ESPN, which means Pat McAfee is celebrating today because he has clearly wrestled control of the place, a place that has been run by Norby Williamson and producers for a long time. Uh, he has wrestled the, the place away from somebody that uh, Pat McAfee called a rat. And mm -hmm. you will get very little disagreement from many of the people who have worked for and around Norby Williamson that Pat McAfee's information was incorrect. Andrew Marchand works for The Athletic now, so that will be $10 for $10 me. Dollar five. Uh, okay. How does this work? Is, is Norby Sports Media Talk? Because I have imaging for this. Yeah, Sports Media Talk, yes. <laughs> annoyed every time Dan Levitard pontificates about the sports media industry? Well, too bad, mother... He knows he don't give a damn about what he's gonna say. It's time for sports media talk today. It's a $5 fine. It's not a $10 <laughs> fine. Oh, okay. Intro? Inflationary times is what we live in. Ryan Glassbeagle of the New York Post reports that Norby did not quit, that there was a difference in visions that were not aligned with ESPN's long-term strategy. And Burke Magnus, the new president of ESPN content from a year ago, made the decision to part ways with Ooh, the season. Ooh, that's ridiculous. McAfee's guy. Burke Magnus. McAfee went out of his he way. Shouted, out, shouted uh, him uh, out. He, yeah. he <laughs> cel celebrated so, Burke. So what does that mean? Was that mutual? Uh, Burke Magnus made the decision to part ways with the seasoned executive. That so sounds fired. Like he got <laughs> fired. The fired. rare parting fired. ways where one person made the decision. Yeah. <laughs> Strong name, by the way. Burke Magnus. Burke. That's, That's a, a guy that makes decisions. Oh, my God. BM. Put it on the poll. Stronger name, Bert or Norby? Burke. Burke. Not Bert. Burke. 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 Austin Burke. Burke. Yeah. Two yeah. last names. Burt, not a strong name. Burke. Strong as shit. Mm -hmm. That is two last names. Two last names. Burke yeah. Magnus. Mm -hmm. Magnus is also like that's. It sounds like something from the movie. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. a power. Oh, it's yeah. world strongest man, is what Magnus <laughs> or a hit man is. Of some sort. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Which out Magnus is coming. You're like, yeah. oh shit. Get Magnus on this. Exactly. And then Magnus is driving. He's wearing all black and sunglasses, even though it's nighttime. And he's driving like a, a Camaro or whatever. And then, he's chasing James Bond. And, it's, not, and it's like Magnus. And then okay. Okay, and then he hangs up, and that's it. That's all. He never has to say anything. Go Just for keep, Magnus. Yeah, go for Magnus. There you go. That's how he answers. Does anyone care about this stuff? Does anyone care? Well, about, you know, I do. Uh, well, I know that sports media people do, but when I ask you about power and control, I've told you before that ESPN is a production company. It's run by producers. It's not run by the talent. It's never been run by the talent, and everything stays on the tracks. So that's not mine. Uh, that is a means. So another 10 That is $5 for a mean. That's not my computer. That is a means computer. I don't know. Do you carry cash? Are you still an old time? Look at you. You carry cash. You and me might be the only two people here carrying cash. I don't know. So that's old. grosser than licking your fingers. <laughs> I got uh, cash right here. Oh, Core terms. Just having to be changed, though. <laughs> no. I asked the question sincerely. When the, the inner workings, it, this is the reason I asked the question, okay? Because people keep telling me right and left that I'm talking about things that our audience doesn't care about when it comes to the sports media. But every time I do, the numbers jump by a lot because people outside of our audience really want the dirt on the insides of what happens at ESPN, so much so that many of these people, like Marchand, can make an entire career out of just reporting on sports media information. And Every time you say Marchand, I think of Marshawn Lynch. And I have him kind of just like, Norby's out, like just in there as he's popping Skittles. If Marshawn Lynch was on the media beat, him oh as a breaking God. news reporter would be terrific. He was great in Bottoms. <laughs> oh my god, amazing at bottom. Might be the best football movie I've ever watched. Good point. 
football adjacent? No, I think it's a football movie. You guys should watch it. It ends on a football field. Marshawn Lynch as an information guy. I'd, I'd, I'd like that. I'd like him just delivering the news however it is that he'd like to say it because he's... <laughs> Uh, but I ask the question sincerely. I know we're interested in it, but I wonder if the public at large uh, is interested in how ESPN is run. It is the worldwide leader. And for many years, quietly, this person's name was not known when I've told you before this person was the person who was defending what seemed to be a lot of times at ESPN the most important thing, which is do not let any of the people who are in front of the cameras or with microphones, set a precedent that other people can then have the power to use against the company. So when Dan Patrick wants a television in his office, in the biggest show in America around sports with Keith Olbermann, they're like, you can't have a television in your office before doing the 11 p.m. Sports Center because then Keith Olbermann will want... Everyone wants a TV, which is the dumbest approach ever. Thank you. The TV thing I never understood. And it, now they all. I, last time I was in East, like yeah. they all kind of have TVs in you their know offices why? now. Uh, part of it is because now TVs cost like a hundred bucks. Those small monitors. Oh, was this when TVs were like? Yes. Oh, okay. there was like okay. a big box. No, it's Dan Patrick and Keith Oberman. It was called the Big Show. It was like the biggest show. Well, like, he, what what they called it. By the way, show. he didn't like it that they called it the Big Show because again. It made them a brand, and he didn't want any brand to be above ESPN. But this is instructive to me. The biggest thing at ESPN was that SportsCenter built the whole thing and don't contaminate it and corrupt it. It's what got Michelle, uh, I'm sorry, Michael Smith and Jamel gone is that, wait a minute, we're not ready for this revolution. The thing that needs to be protected is the SportsCenter brand. But the part to me that's interesting about what just happened today is do you guys realize that Pat McAfee and Stephen A. Smith have now some sort of unprecedented power in the history of the place to call out an executive by name who runs the place, and shortly thereafter, the executive is gone. That's real and substantive shift of brand power. That's ESPN saying, conceding, as Iger is talking to shareholders about what ESPN's digital plan is in the future, what I've told you that's most interesting about the Pat McAfee deal, he blew up a four-year, $120 million deal to take this one at ESPN, and everyone thinks it's going to fail, but they're letting him do whatever he wants. They're all a little bit afraid of him, and he's not afraid of anybody. I don't have any, like, dog in this fight. I never worked at ESPN with you guys, but I, I'm just wondering if you're a little jealous you weren't the one to do the... the yeah. uh, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm going to say this, man. There is something to when you're going... Because I've been through this now twice at two different places where you're going through something and you're like, how does everyone not see that he's the problem? And then you leave, and then shortly thereafter... Oh, yeah, that guy's a problem. Like, that's what I was saying for years, but everyone looked at me like I was crazy. This happened to me with the Suns, and it happened with ESPN with, with Norby. And it's just like part of it, uh, Jessica's like, you're about like about time. But then the, there's another part of it was like, why well, wasn't anyone listening when I was saying this shit? But what is Jessica asking? Am I jealous of not what? Jealous. The amount of you power? You could have been the one to do that, the thing. Not the amount of power, that the idea that like when you butted heads with this individual – there was not this sort of reaction of like, wait a second, this is one of our brightest talents and, uh, you know, an incredible creator. And this guy is a guy who, you know, tells people to, you know, not or to stick to sports or whatever. Like, why are we siding with the other guy? I uh, blame myself for not realizing what McAfee realized, which is when you have the power of the president behind mm-hmm. you. In that case, it was John Skipper when I had it. Mm-hmm. In this case, McAfee has Pitaro and Iger, that that would create a and fearlessness Bur- that Bur- you can then trample just about anybody who's wronging you because you have the backing of the most powerful people in the place. I wasn't, I wasn't quite smart enough to see that I could have created a great deal more unrest, but I also wasn't trying to get anyone fired. And at the end, once Skipper leaves, 
and Norby is in charge, I no longer have that power to do much of anything because it went right back to being a production company. Skipper was trying to rattle all that. He demoted he demoted Norby. Norby lost the yeah. Bake Off. He's an ESPN lifer, and he lost it to a person who was a bit of a cardboard cutout. Like, it wasn't an impressive person that he lost it to and then somehow made his way back up in the business. But for him to be run off as a lifer at ESPN, like, this is a crushing loss for him that your last public act was to basically get totally undressed by Pat McAfee who ends up winning today because the only reason people know your name is because he called you a rat, and a few months later, he's more powerful than ever, and you're now gone.